everyone, and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's as simple as tapping that subscribe button, making sure to select all to receive all of my future postings after you have tapped the notification bell. Okay, so here, okay, many of you are familiar with these that have been following me for some time, and for those of you that are new, um, these are two um, topiary, you can call them wall panels, um, you can call them flanks, um, that's what I'm, uh, that, that is what I am used to calling them is, is uh, flanks, um, but they were purchased um, some time back. Um, I have not been able to find any more. Some have been on Amazon. Home Depot had some for sale. Um, but anyhow, they are just um, wonderful pieces to have. But the only thing that I've always wanted to change on these are the galvanized uh, tin. So I'm going to share with you all how we are going to make these very warm, French country beauties today. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so I'd like to take a moment and introduce all of you to Johanna's Dream Home channel. All of you must, must Please go show her some great support. Let her know the little blue fly sent you over. Um, she is actually in Romania and she renovates her, she's in the process of renovating her cottage and she does cooking and crafting tutorials and everything inside her home just speaks so much to me and um, she really just takes you to a place and makes you forget about everything else for a while. So I highly recommend that you go take a look at her channel. So we are going, I'm going to give you a close up of these. You can see we have some chippy goodness going on around the wood. You can obviously see the galvanized tin, and um, which is fine too. This way, I mean, it, it's I'm sure it would be a big hit with the farmhouse decorators, and you know I have kept it this way for some time, but now I'm going to enjoy warming them up. Let's take a peek over them because it's snow. We have a bit of a snowstorm coming through, and um, it's very therapeutic sitting here painting in the snow. And you're gonna see some snow actually coming in while I am painting these pieces. So this is a first time. Um, this is the first time I have ever used this rub and buff a few of you have mentioned for for me to try this product out and um i didn't realize that it had petroleum in it and i didn't even read it but when i opened it up i said "Ooh, we have to have ventilation so i'm sharing here and as you can see <laughs> there's snow coming in through the door um, I have some windows open and the door open, but I painted around the topiary I wanted to show um, to share with you all with this small brush right here. I am leaving a little bit of the galvanized look because that's just going to add another layer to things. give you a good zoom in. Now, I want to share with you all that it's not, um, when you paint galvanized tin, you don't have to do an all over even, um, 
like painting on it because when it's lighter in some areas areas and darker in the other you're just giving it um, more depth everything doesn't look the same definitely uh, more visual interest so don't worry about when you use this rub and buff that you have to have an even coat everywhere because you do not have to um, and it, it's important that, you know, I put that out there because with this particular um, paint, it doesn't go, I mean, it goes on well, actually much easier than using a liquid gold guild. Um, you just simply put it on a cloth and swirl it about and it, it's on, it's there. But again, I just want to stress, don't give it that, oh, well, I mean, you can if you want to. It, it is personal, personal preference, right? Always personal preference. But I'm just saying, um, it doesn't have to be a solid coverage. Now, you're seeing all this little excess, and that's what happens when you use this rub and buff, and you just rub it off. And then whatever you have left over on your cloth, well, you can just go and rub it on other areas on the, um, on the panel. And then as you can see, I left a little bit of the original tin to show through because when I go and age it, it's going to give a gorgeous variation and depth. Okay, here we have the panel, um, the rub and buff, and it is antique gold, has been applied. It took me about an hour to do this. And as you can see, I left some of the original tin showing through. And then up at top, I added on some of the antiquing glaze. Now. The reason why I decided to do this, here it is, it's the home decor wax, because I felt so bad in last video with my little mice. Um, I did not give instructions on the glaze. And many of you have already seen me do this, but there are many new subscribers and I just felt really bad for all of you. So I decided, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and do these two flanks or panels. So just with a small brush, oh, <laughs> we're just gonna put glaze on all over this panel. No, um, there's no set way to do this. Um, you just dab around, um, you make X's as you're placing it on. This is the great part about painting, not having with glaze. You don't have to do structured um, lines. Just put a good application on. And this glaze can be purchased at Michael's. And you can see inside of all the leaves there's a little bit, you know, of the original tin showing through, and I'm gonna cover up a few of those spots with the glaze. And then you just get um, a lint-free cloth, or these blue shop towels are, are great. They're my go-to. They can be purchased at Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot. And you just dab. It's almost like, um, a dab, you know, flick of the wrist type of, of motion. You don't want to like pull it down because then it takes away all the antique shading. It just looks like a streak of glaze and you don't want that. And you can go over it as many 
different times as you like. That snow is really, it's starting to build up on the window a little bit right there. Now what I'm noticing as I am placing on this glaze is the green from the topiary is really starting to come out. And then on the sides, they added um, like an aging texture on the tin. So when I go over it with the glaze, that area is going to be a little bit darker, which is great. It offers the perfect character. And if you look to the right hand side up at top a little bit, you already see the glaze that has been applied over that texture. Pay special attention to your edges where the frame is at. You want to not let your, gla your glaze just pull up, you know, develop a pooling of, um, uh, you know, like a pool, like a swimming pool type of buildup of glaze next to the frame. I just sort of wanted to um, take you all through this whole process. I didn't want to fast forward. I wanted to give a good um, explaining of things. Adding a little inside the leaves again. And it truly is just this simple. You just place the glaze on and you dab it. And with a flick of the wrist, you just take off the excess and it leaves behind this gorgeous aged shading. Now I've flipped it upside down and I wanna share this pot portion. I'm, gonna, I'm going to do things a little bit different. I did not want to paint this part right here gold because I wanted to give it a completely different color. Almost like a, a stone look in a way. Just going to dab around wherever. Now on the pot, I want you to notice there's a orange color and some red, a little bit of red and there's some purples in there and yellow. I'm not going to put glaze over those colors. I want them to stay as is. I'm just going to go over the original tin. Now some glaze will go on that on those colors, but very little. That's the beauty about painting, you know, you can have a, a variation of many different textures and colors. And I personally, if it makes my eyes move back and forth and up and down a lot, okay, it has me. It, it has, um, it has passed the little blue fly test. My eyes must be kept busy. Now you can see the two different colors. The one to the right, it's just a little bit more um, 
rich in tone and color. And then when we go over onto the pot, you can see it has more of an aged stone color. And then just dab around because you want it to make it look as natural as you can. You don't want it to be so obvious that, hey, I just put glaze in this area. <laughs> right? If that makes sense. I'm going to share that again up in this area. Well, I apologize. I'm sorry. I thought I actually, I just skipped over that part. I'm just going to go over here to the left you're going to see that I go over a little bit of the greenery, which is perfectly fine. And I want you to notice where the purple and the original tin was, how I really blended in the glaze to that purple. You just don't want that straight line going across. You see quite a bit of the texture that they added up in the corner. Perfect. Gorgeous touch. Get up close to the frame because you don't want streaks of gold without the glaze on it. And you can see going around the pot where I left the original tin open and I placed the glaze on, it offers like an outline of a stone color. Move this over. I'm trying to get a better hold of it. Normally, I would have this flat on a table because it would be much easier to work with. So if any of you have galvanized pieces at home, um, Try this out. I know Hobby Lobby has a, a ton. Even um, Michael's or thrifted or thrifting stores have um, tons of galvanized pieces or old metal and you can apply this wax to those pieces. Painted or, or not. want to pull it back so you can see this aging is just it's perfect I love love this glaze so here is before the original which is is very nice I, I loved it this way as well well I mean I liked it now I love it <laughs> and here is the aging now it's almost finished we still have another step to take. So 
also hear both of them are now completed with all of the aging from the glaze. And now I need to, I'm going to make all these colors become just a little bit more vivid and still keep the warmth. And that's by using polycrylic by Minwax. This is the clear gloss. I purchased mine, I believe from Lowe's. And I'm just going to use my purdy brush. Love the purdy brushes. So on this panel right here, to the left, you can see I already added on some poly and I have not on the right. It immediately makes all the colors more vivid. And where these are getting placed, the corner is kind of dark there. So I really needed um, these pieces to have this poly on them. It would have been fine, you know, in any other area of the home if there was more light to keep them without the poly. Now, when applying this, make sure that you don't leave behind, um, it's like a milky residue. It, it, it looks like milk. Um, you want to try to remove that the best that you can. Otherwise, it's going to dry like that. And you're going to see that white, um, milky color and texture. And you do not want that on your that that is a huge no no so i just lighten up on my brush strokes and it will take that milkiness away now i'm going to add two coats onto the wood and onto the panel i thought at first i was just going to do one but i decided to do two And this, this technique, it was, I didn't even use one tube of rub and buff, which was $5.99. I already had my polycrylic from, you know, other projects and, and my brush and, and the glaze that is very inexpensive. It's, it's under $5. So to transform these prints, it was less than $10 for me to do. And it is a beautiful touch of French country old world to add into my whimsy cottage. <laughs> 